the story of the play is of the Third Reich's attempt to fulfill their fantasy of controlling people down to their very most personal fantasies. And that's told through the creation of these comforters. The play is a historical farce about um, the creation of the blow-up sex doll. <laughs> the Nazi parties, um, the Nazi party originally created the blow-up doll because um, SS men and um, Nazi soldiers were getting syphilis from prostitutes, so they wanted to prevent them from dying of syphilis and rather preferred them to die in battle. But the story goes deeper than that. It's, it's also kind of about the grand vision that the Nazis had to transform the entire planet into this Aryan ideal. So the sex dolls become a, a uh, vehicle to create this vision. Uh, and, and they test it and change it and alter it until it becomes uh, the ideal that Himmler wants. Uh, it includes some, you know, uh, very fun things going into eugenics and there's a love story. Um, my character is <laughs> kind of close to my own person. It's an incredibly, she's an incredibly kind of nerd-tastic, awkward scientist who um, is an expert in textiles and um, works for the Nazi party as a scientist and is brought in to collaborate with a scientist called Arthur Rink in, in the process of building the sex toy blow-up doll. My character, he's, he's a, a designer, an industrial designer uh, that um, does, is reluctant, I would say, uh, and thinks this is not the best idea, and uh, I think is a bit torn about uh, what he's doing. Uh, and as the uh, play continues, he, he, first of all, he's not really good with people. He's not a people person. Uh, he's uncomfortable, he's shy, uh, not unlike myself a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so we have that in common. Um, but he, uh, he feels that it's, you know, he needs to do it. He's been charged with building this doll, so he's going to go ahead and give it a go. But as the play goes on, uh, he becomes more and more uh, uh, vocal about uh, thinking that perhaps this isn't the best idea and that... Uh, that uh, he might not want to complete this project. Yeah, I play um, pretty much three different characters. Um, as long as they're all soldiers, and they all have similar situations. They all have they're all fighting in the German army uh, in the war. I don't look a whole lot like Heinrich Himmler, and I'm not trying to. Uh, I probably don't sound a lot like Heinrich Himmler, and I doubt that he, uh, you know, recited as much poetry as I do. Um, but um, you know that being said, uh, I'm I'm pursuing Himmler's agenda of you know a racially pure um, nation and um, making sure that our soldiers stay alive and don't die of syphilis. What I do in this play is uh, I wrote some of the music. Um, I invited some good musicians to come along and play and then I sat next to them while they did that. Um, I move things around on stage, but I also get to play four eugenicists, historical figures, and I get to give despicable speeches. We, we started with the overture and the ballet that Christian had written, which set a beautiful tone. Uh, I thought really captured the strange balance between whimsy and, and perverse somberness that goes on through the whole story, back and forth all the time, and, and even simultaneously. <laughs> For me, the play is about the fact that what you think life is, is rarely what it actually is. And kind of the more you try and grasp onto that and make it something that it kind of gets away from. Um, I, uh, you know, I just look at, 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 like, all of 
the Nazis and who had all of this this grand plan and it was a horrific plan but it was a grand plan and it just went away and I think about these eugenicists who you know at the time they were respected scientists and respected thinkers of their times and they came up with this idea of, of really trying to make the human race better and if they had seen what Hitler did with it they would have been like what the hell happened <laughs> so that's kind of what it's about to me <laughs>